Hello and welcome to Stotros Maths key skill video on determining the nth term formula of a geometric sequence. And we want to find the nth term formula of each of these sequences here. And what I mean by finding an nth term formula is an expression in terms of n, where n is a position, that if, say, I wanted to find, say, the 80th term of this formula, I could just substitute 80 into my formula and work out what the 80th term is. So we've seen that in lots of previous videos on sequences. Now, what makes it a geometric sequence is that we're multiplying by the same value each time. So you can see, look, this is doubling each time, times by two, times by two. If you were adding or subtracting the same number each time, that's known as an arithmetic sequence, and we look at that in separate videos. Now, if you're timesing by the same number each time, in this case two, we start our formula with two to the power of n. If, say, you were multiplying by 3 each time, you would start your formula with 3 to the power of n. If you were multiplying by 4 each time, you would start your formula with 4 to the power of n. Now, let's think. If we had a sequence with this expression for the nth term, what would be the first term of our formula? Well, because I want the first term, I make n1 and substitute it into this formula. So, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. What about the second term? I do 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. What's 2 to the power of 3? That's 2 cubed, which is 8. What's 2 to the power of 4? Well, that's 16. Now, at the moment, 2 to the n, if that was our form of our sequence, we get 2, 4, 8, 16. That's not right, is it? We want to get 6, 12, 24, 48 as our sequence. But there's an easy fix. What could you do to 2 to get to 6? What could you do to 4 to get to 12? What could you do with to 8 to get to 24? But the same thing in every case. Well, can you see that the sequence, that number, is 3 times bigger than the 2? That 12 is 3 times bigger than the 4? So all we need to do is to take the sequence and multiply each number by 3, and that will fix it and give us the sequence we want. So in fact, our formula is going to be 2 to the n multiplied by 3, and that's the final answer. If you want to write that more cleanly without the times, because we tend to not like to use times in algebra, we could write that as three brackets two to the n. Because remember, in algebra, if two things are next to each other, then we multiply them. We wouldn't write it without the brackets, because otherwise that looks like 32 to the power of n, which is not what we want. So that's the best way of writing it. That's how I would write it personally. What about the second one? Again, we identify the number that we're multiplying each time. Well, these are getting three times big each time. So I just put a line here to make a sort of table. And if we're multiplying by 3 each time, I'm going to start my formula with 3 to the power of n. This is known as an exponential term, by the way, because our variable is in the power. So what would 3 to the n give us as a sequence? Well, if it's the first term, n is 1, 3 to the power of 1 is 3. What would be the second term? n is 2, 3 to the power of 2 is 9. What would be the third term? 3 to the power of 3 is 27. That will probably be enough. And what do we need to do to this sequence to get us the correct sequence of 2, 6, 18? Well, it's always what we need to either multiply or divide by. So in this case, we could just triple it to get to the right term, triple this to get to the right term. What do we need to do to 3 to get to 2? What do we need to times by? What do we times 9 by to get to 6? What do we times 27 by to get to 18? Well, can you see that this number is two-thirds of that? We can times 3 by two-thirds to get to 2. We can times a 9 by two-thirds to get to 6. We can times 27 by two-thirds to get to 18. And therefore, our formula is going to be 3 to the n times two-thirds. Or we could write that as two-thirds in brackets, 2 to the power of n. If you really want to be super clever, you might use laws of indices. We could write this as 3 to the n divided by 3 to the 1. Now, if you have 3 to the n divided by 3 to the 1, laws of indices, you subtract these indices. So it's 3 to the power of n minus 1. So we could write 3 to the power of n minus 1. And we're still timesing it by 2. So it's 2 times 3 to the n minus 1. Because when you times by 2 thirds, you divide by 3 and then you times by 2, don't you? So that is the best possible answer. And that is quite a difficult question, so don't worry if you found that a bit hard.